We're coming to the end of 2023, one of the most stacked years in gaming, period. And whilst things aren't looking terrific on the film and TV side of comic book franchises, the gaming side is looking more promising than ever, with lots to be excited about, including games that you might have missed have been announced. So today, we're going to recap every DC and Marvel game that is currently in development right now that we have to look forward to, and what we can expect from them. Sound good? Alright, let's do it. So, let's start with what's right on the horizon, and probably the most controversial out of them all. Yet, yeah, I'm still crazy excited about it. That Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, created by Rocksteady Studios. Now look, I get if you're disappointed, it's not Superman. It's not a traditional superhero single player narrative. But it's nuts to me that people are writing this one off before there's even a single preview or hands-on of the game. I get not loving the live aspect service, but... It's still an Arkhamverse campaign for everyone to play through that looks a big budget production and it's fighting the Justice League man. From the near perfect suit design of the league to getting to go to Metropolis to the traversal just looking crazy smooth. I'm really excited. I just think it's crazy how people have already wrote this one off. It kind of reminds me of Guardians of the Galaxy how everyone just shit taught that game in its marketing cycle and it was outstanding and underrated to this day if anything. Anyway, Suicide Squad is a single player or cooperative shooter pitting Harley Quinn, King Shark, Captain Boomerang and Deadshot against the Justice League under the influence of Brainiac. Yep, it's a live service with more content to be added over time, including free characters, missions, stories and of course battle passes and cosmetics and them kind of shenanigans. Still, my biggest problem, which is huge, is that the always online requirement is still there. So if this game ever shuts down, we lose it forever, right now in its current state. A game in the Arkhamverse has to be preserved, there is no doubt about it. Anyway, Suicide Squad launches February 2nd, or if you get the Big Boy Edition, 72 hours before that, with the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles and PC. Switching comic book universes, let's pivot to Marvel. And right now, one of the best and certainly the most consistent studio, Insomniac Games, who are making a Wolverine game. I will die defending X-Men Origins Wolverine. We got so many crappy little comic book, video game, superhero, movie, tie-ins, whatever you want to call them. The way they depicted the brutality of the character, but also like the damage and the regeneration, it was way ahead of its time. But an Insomniac Wolverine game? A triple A Wolverine game? Let's go, man. Insomniac's output is nuts. We've just had Spider Man 2, which is an all timer for comic book games, and now we have this to look forward to, which has kind of been confirmed is going for a more mature tone. Though, I don't know, man, if you play them Spider Man games, it ain't just cheery shit 24 7. I think the potential here is massive, though. I'm really keen to see how it's made. Is it linear? Is it semi-open world, like a God of War game with different cities? Is it different biomes? Or is it like full-on Spider-Man open world? Is it pre-X-Men, during X-Men, post-X-Men? It's confirmed it's set in the same universe as Spider-Man, and that is dense with comic book references, so who knows, man? Who knows? This one is probably my most anticipated on this list right now. All we have is the reveal trailer and some minor details from like reputable insiders. It's looking like this one is going to hit in 2025, though a small chance that maybe it could hit next year. Though, just let Insomniac cook. They know what they're doing over there. This one's going to be a PS5 exclusive title. No confirmed date yet. Going back to DC. Let's spice it up a little with something you're not expecting me to say. The Wolf Among Us 2. Man. This is like Hollow Knight Silk Song. Like, what is happening with this game? Where is it? This is the follow-up to arguably Telltale's finest game, The Wolf Among Us. It's not your typical DC game, but I'd say this is a narrative adventure game. It's developed by a new form team at Telltale, the reform version, should we say. If you haven't played the original, you should. It's insanely good, man. I've kind of stopped jiving with these games as much recently, but I can't undersell just how good that first game is. This is due to take place six months after the original, where you play as Bigby Wolf in a kind of noir, neo-noir mystery, solving murders, which to me is a very dull down version way of putting this game. But I think if anyone thinks of Telltale Games, they think of this product. There's no confirmed release date on this one. I don't know when we're going to see it, but hopefully soon. 
Keeping with DC, the final DC game on this list, Wonder Woman. If you've been following this game, we've been going through the ringer on this one in the past few weeks. So this is being made by Monolith, the creators of the Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor Middle Earth games. Excellently made video games, particularly Mordor. But there's one unique gameplay that nobody else is allowed to do because of patents. The Nemesis system, baby. Now this, with a Wonder Woman game, I mean, come on, let's go. Transferring the gameplay elements of those Shadow games to Wonder Woman is a match made in heaven. Now, recent weeks, everyone got a little scared, including me, because they were hiring people for who have experience in live service. And everyone was like, don't you bloody dare, don't you dare. But since then, WB have clarified that this is still a strictly single player narrative with the Nemesis system involved. It sounds like we're going to be returning home to Themyscira, as the plot synopsis is she has to fight to unite her Amazon family and the humans from the modern world. Sounds good to me, man. A AAA realisation of Themyscira is exciting, but also Wonder Woman 2. Hopefully, it's a depiction that we all know of the character and not whatever Wonder Woman 84 was. Yes, that movie did happen. Sorry, I had to remind you. I wouldn't be shocked if we see this one at the Game Awards in a few weeks, because that would mark two years since its official reveal there. No date on this, just that it's targeting PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles and PC. I think there's a lot to be hyped about the potential of this one, I really do. Right, a few Marvel games to rattle off that I'd wager are pretty far away. Let's start with what I consider the most fascinating, which is Skydance New Media's Captain America and Black Panther game. Now, all we've seen of this one is like a minute long teaser, and I mean teaser, like we don't even have a name for it yet. It's billed as a story driven action adventure game, letting you play as Black Panther and Captain America, but also US soldier Gabriel Jones and Nanali, I believe is how you say it, who is the leader of the Wakanda's spy network. It's set during World War II, and this is why it's fascinating to me. It sounds so different, but I'm intrigued, like really intrigued. It's hard enough to make just a Captain America game or a Black Panther game, but four playable characters is pretty mad. And how do you make the non-superhero characters as fun? This is Amy Hennig's new studio, one of the main creative leads behind Uncharted 1-3. to It's an ensemble game rather than just one focus, and I really think that's got intriguing possibilities from both a narrative and a gameplay point of view. Like I say, details are very scarce on this one which is going to be a running theme for the next few games, but this is Skydance's first project. Maybe, depends on if they release a Star Wars game first, we don't know. Nevertheless, one to keep an eye on. No date, no platform info on this one, though I would hope to see this one before the end of the generation for sure. Keeping to scarce and minimal info games, we've got an Iron Man game. Now look, I have controversial takes, but Anthem is the closest and best concept we've had for an Iron Man game yet. If you want a taste of Iron Man, go play Anthem. I'm an avid Anthem defender. I will not apologise. Anyway, this one's exciting. It's being made by EA Motive, recently behind the extremely impressive Dead Space remake and underrated Star Wars Squadrons. Again, another win for single-player gamers. Only details we really have on this is that it will feature an original narrative that taps into the rich history of Iron Man, channeling the complexity, charisma and creative genius of Tony Stark and enabling players to feel what it's like to truly play as Iron Man. All marketing jargon, of course, but I feel really good about this one. EA Motive has got a really good recent track record and they need to get on Bioware and ask about that flying Tekken Anthem because what made that feel so good? Anyway, I'll shut up about Anthem. We know this game is being developed in Unreal Engine 5. What I will say is the emphasis on Tony Stark is exciting to me. What Insomniac grasp about Spider-Man is that it's as much as a Peter Parker or Miles story as it is a Spider-Man story. And I hope this one rings true for the Iron Man game. Again, like, it's got huge potential. But aside from that, that's all we've really got. Details are scarce. We do know that it's still in pre-production. So no date and no platform info on this one just yet. Last, but certainly not least... EA again? Real talk for a minute though, EA in the last few years have really turned it around, like forget about the shy in the cash cows of Madden and FIFA, we've now got single player games, the Jedi games, they took a chance on Immortals of Avian, 
the published It Takes Two, the Dead Space remake, they stuck with Battlefield 2042 and turned it around. Apex Legends, like, they've won a lot of good faith in recent years. Anyway, I got distracted. A Black Panther game, made by newly formed studio Cliffhanger Games, formed with lots of video game talent and veterans in the industry who have worked on the Middle Earth games, God of War, Halo, it's pretty exciting. They state we're dedicated to delivering fans a definitive and authentic Black Panther experience, giving them more agency and control over their narrative than they have ever experienced in a story-driven video game. That sounds pretty exciting to me. They also say Wakanda is a rich superhero sandbox and our mission is to develop an epic world for players who love Black Panther and want to explore the world of Wakanda as much as we do. Yet again, that's about as much info as we've got on this one. It seems as though this one's even earlier in development than Iron Man. But it's really cool to see the level of diversity that this studio is looking to achieve with this game with its employees. The Black Panther in Marvel's Avengers was really good. So a whole game dedicated around him is very exciting to me, man. It really is. Again, no date or platform info on this one. We'll just have to wait and see. Now that's everything officially in development and announced. But we've got to take ourselves to that good old rumour mill for a second. It looks as though, after success but middling reception to Gotham Knights, WB Montreal are already at work at their next superhero project. Looking at kind of leaks and recent hiring, this was a while ago now, but they were looking for both Unreal Engine 5 experience and it was billed to be a single player game. I didn't hate Gotham Knights, but it definitely fell short in quite a few aspects and definitely gave the impression that it was a live service game that was then last minute pivoted to just a co-op one. Which, it really hurt the game, it really did. Who knows if this is what they're still after. Big David Zaslav, everyone's favourite villain, I mean uh, CEO, has been making the rounds talking about how they want to make more recurring revenue and change from three to four year dev cycles for a game to longer recurring revenue cycles, aka live service. I'll make another video about that in due time to highlight just how stupid this is to be purely service based. We also know EA struck a deal to get three Marvel games. We know two of them, like I said, Iron Man and Black Panther. I wonder what that third one might be. Honestly? Man, give us a Punisher game. We've only ever had the PS2 tie-in. Frank Castle, he needs some love out here in video games. Give him a game. Final thing is obviously Spider-Man 3 at some point, and whatever they're teasing with that DLC. Maybe? Or a spin-off? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Well, that's every Marvel and DC game in development right now, and I'm sure there's more that's being cooked up that we don't know about. Even if the box office side of things is slowing and the quality is getting poor, we're in great hands with what to expect on the video game side. So, what caught your eye? What project out of all of these are you most looking forward to? If you enjoyed this video and are excited for more superhero games, then smash that like button. And if you're looking to stay up to date on all of these projects, hit that subscribe button. You're exactly where you need to be, especially with Suicide Squad right around the corner. Have a terrific day, and I'll catch you in the next one.